Hello everyone and welcome to episode 25 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the incredible Alasia Sunstar of the Sanctuary of Sophia and a beautiful little Amanita mushroom who also had some words of wisdom to share with us all. In this inspiring episode, Alasia shares her amazing journey from a workaholic in the busy world of corporate marketing and event planning, who reached a place of burnout before finally taking the leap to leave her hectic life to follow the nudges of her deep knowing that there was more to life. Since then, her life has magically unfolded through sacred pilgrimages to connect with her own ancestral roots and her shamanistic calling to connect her more deeply with her sacred relationship with nature and Mother Earth. We discuss the simple but profound experience available to all of us by finding the courage to claim what's calling your heart and how a beautiful army of beings equipped with their ancient nurturing wisdom in the form of plants, trees and wild creatures are patiently waiting for the opportunity to be heard so that they can guide and assist us once more. We explore the indigenous wisdom of our lands and the need for reverence in our relationships with nature and a remembering of the sacred reciprocity towards Gaia. But mostly, we are urged by the Fae to remember the magic that connects us all and in attuning with the earth, we are being asked to bring our love and the healing sound of joy and laughter to the world at this time. Welcome everyone and welcome Alasia to this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I'm really excited to be talking to you. I've just felt this connection to you for the last few days and I'm interested to see where our conversation flows today. But I just get started with all my guests by asking them a little bit about their nature story. So it's quite open, whatever really nature means to you or has meant to you during your life. And yeah, if there's anything that you'd like to share about nature, that would be lovely. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you so much for holding this beautiful space. So excited to share and connect with you. When you bring in the frequency of nature the first feeling that i feel in my body and that connection is nature has always been a sanctuary for me throughout all of my life and i believe that i really started to connect more deeply into this beautiful sanctuary space which is nature which is gaia when I was in high school, actually, because I, my parents went through a really nasty divorce. And in the middle of my freshman year of high school, uh, my mom got remarried and I had to switch schools from the school and the home that I had lived in my whole life. And I moved to another town and I was away from all my friends and in a neighborhood that wasn't really nature friendly, but what was such a blessing was right behind our house, there was a Metro park Mm -hmm. and it was a beautiful trail. And so I could walk to the the park from the house. And so I kind of felt like hostage at times at the house because I was in this new environment that felt Mm -hmm. really unsafe and unsettling and so much new. And so I would go to this park it was called sand. It's called sand run. It's still one of uh, my favorite parks. And mm. I would go there and I would walk these trails and I would be immersed in nature and I would listen to my music and I would walk in these trails and I would just feel so at peace. And it was literally like my sanctuary. And I'd go there every day to just walk and be, and be with the the water that was coming through. And it really, taught me so much about myself I did a lot of self-reflecting and from there my love story with Gaia just continued (laughs) um but that was really my it was really a sanctuary and a safe haven for me when I felt so alone and disconnected from so many things and it just allowed me to go so deep so it's a sanctuary it always has been still is yeah I think that's 
I think that's similar for a lot of people, isn't it? Um, probably people that are, are generally more sensitive and they struggle a little bit more in our sort of hectic, commercial, consumer-driven world that they do find these spaces in nature. And like you say, it can, can be quite a small space, but it just allows you to sort of come home to yourself, doesn't it? And um, I think, I don't know, I mean, it's almost... It's sort of like it's there's something in our DNA, isn't there, that like we just immediately feel safety and security. It's like this echoing back to our sort of ancestry where we just feel at home, I think, don't we? And we feel held by these beautiful spaces. Yeah, absolutely. It's intrinsic to our makeup, you know, as part of being human and living on this earth we are so deeply connected and I feel like so many people can relate to just being outside and just feeling the actual presence of life, right? Like we're always in all of these boxes and we go from one box to another, right? And yeah. for for me, like I'm so deeply connected to nature and like I am making my way back to tribal living and to really being outside more. And I really feel it's a part of my own experience of what I'm holding and carrying to really connect more deeply with the earth in those ways, because I always feel so much better being outside and I would spend all my time outside if I could. <laughs> that's that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, you you touched on it there, and I know um I I've seen it on, on I'm not sure on your social media, but you do actually have um sort of indigenous ancestry, don't you? And you've kind of you've been deepening into that sort of wisdom of um or well, your ancestors really, isn't it? Um, over the last few years, haven't you? Having had quite a sort of I guess an upbringing that was quite removed from it and then you've you went on a bit of a pilgrimage didn't you if um I don't know how recently that was but I saw that you you said you went on a pilgrimage to um sort of your ancestors homelands yeah yeah that's true I I went in August um on my mother's side I have indigenous blood and she told me about it when I was a child and ever since then, like, it was just calling to me. I said, I have to go, I have to go, I have to go to those lands, to the reservation, I have to see. And so, yeah, after many, many, many years, um, it all came together where my sister and my cousin on my mother's side, the three of us, the circle, we went, yeah, we went to the Mohawk Akosasne reservation, which is where our great grandparents lived. And it was honestly, one of the most deeply magical shamanic experiences of my life. It was this, just everything that came in, the hawks greeting us as my sister and I departed Ohio to go meet up with my cousin in New York and just everything, the connection to the river. And it was deeply humbling to be there and to really connect to that way of being and existing. And it unlocked so many pieces for me. And since then, you know, I'm I'm really deepening into that because I'm living full time in an RV now, which is something I never <laughs> thought I would ever do ever. And and it was a, a divine download that came in last year that that guided me and my sacred partner to begin living this lifestyle to get into deeper right relationship with the earth and with the lands because we're grid workers. So it was, it's been a really intense initiation, but also really beautiful to be immersed and to remember what it's like to, of how we impact the earth and how much nature serves us as well. Yeah, I think the, I, f I feel like more and more there's um this beautiful space opening up for that indigenous wisdom to actually of um retake its place in the world I think that's maybe the the best way to to say it um I know one of my favorite books that I read was the beautiful braiding sweetgrass and um and she talks so much about her indigenous um past and the wisdom of that she was handed down about our relationship and our place amongst the plants and and the earth and I find that that's like a, a really important theme I think as we're trying to find our way forward 
at this time in the space that we're in trying to reposition ourselves to to nurture the earth in a better manner than we have been um so I'm really it's it's lovely to hear that you you actually have that kind of ancestral connection and you're able to to bring that into our culture at this time yeah sister it really is so important you're reflecting something so beautiful because we have become as a collective so disconnected from our mother from mother earth and we're coming home to her that's what we're moving through through this collective ascension and it's so important to really connect with the earth because of our what it means for our own personal connection and this is the time right the prophecies have all prophesized about this time and I love what you brought in about the plants because the plants have a huge role in what humanity is moving through. I mean, even if you look at what's happening with plant medicine, because I'm a plant medicine oracle. And so I am an advocate for the plants and working with them consciously. And there are so many people who are finding healing within plant medicine, whether that's in like psychedelic medicine or in just living a more plant-based lifestyle or working with herbal teas and things like that to support their body in that beautiful purification process. But with that, it's just so important to honor and recognize that the plants are also alive and they're guiding us if we can just attune to their frequency and listen because there's so much wisdom that streams through the plants and it's all part of this beautiful tapestry we're weaving. It's just about tuning into it. Yeah. I am. I've sort of, I've had my own sort of little dabblings with, with plant medicine. I think um, it was probably one of my horses who um, was quite ill and traditional medicine didn't really have any answers for him. And I guess he sort of initiated me into to plant medicine and I'd have these amazing times I'd just take him out and and we'd sort of wander along the the sort of roadsides and the paths and he'd select what he wanted to eat and how much he wanted to eat and then I'd be like go away and (laughs) look up what the plant was and, (laughs) and try and learn more about it and understand why he was selecting it like trusting that he was selecting what he needed but trying to then understand what what it was helping him with and from there I also um went on to work with uh, flower essences and had some amazing experiences creating some of my own essences as well and just having the time to sit and and sort of meditate and tap into their wisdom and just the amazing sort of synchronicities that would happen. Um, I created one essence and as I was walking away from creating it, I like cut my hand. (laughs) It's like, okay, so that's going to be good for wounds. Then (laughs) It's just amazing, isn't it? The the wisdom that is there all around us. Um, And I guess we have to, I think it goes back to what you were saying about nature being a sanctuary and, actually we just have to listen don't we we have to relearn that ability to listen and also I think realize that they are beings don't they that they they do have this own intrinsic life force and they have things that they can share with us I love your story about your experience with your horse that is just I mean that is that it's that's it right there right of just being so in tune with your horse because horse medicine too, the medicine that horses carry is just so powerful and Mm -hmm. beautiful. And I, I feel like there's so much power in medicine and what you just shared around (laughs) trusting your animal and then listening to the plants because they're communicating and being guided. And even like how that can show up in our own lives of right now, like I'm working with Rose T, right? I'm really connected to the Rose. And so she really helps me soften, but she's also really strong and she supports my, my feminine embodiment. Right. And, um, there's so much wisdom there. And I think it is truly about coming back home into our hearts and like tuning out the noise because there's so much noise, even just physical noise pollution. Yeah. And being in stillness in nature 
if it's possible, as much as it can be possible. Um, I know when we're living in towns and cities, it's it's difficult. There's a lot of noise pollution, but that's why I love the night so much too, because everybody's asleep and nature is so still and I can just tune in yeah. <laughs> really deeply. No, I think um, roses, I know from uh, sort of essential oils, like the rose is, is kind of this amazing oil um and it has incredible properties to heal like very deeply isn't it um deep sort of emotional wounds um in the ancestry as well so I think it's quite it's um fascinating that actually at this time as you're connecting back with your indigenous ancestry that you're you're working with the rose as well and um the wisdom that she's giving you yeah and connecting so deeply to the womb right the rose is so connected to the womb and there's so many the rose lineage right of like that womb wisdom and you think of the earth and her womb and all of the wisdom and codes and just incredible beauty that is stored within the the cosmic womb of Gaia and that is accessible to us especially as women who can really tap into that through our own womb sovereignty and yeah the plants are here to help us with that you know it's just it's such a beautiful process yeah it they are incredible I think um if we sort of circle back again because I think you you have quite a an interesting past as well because um I think sometimes people um kind of feel like people like you were kind of almost like you've always been like that and actually you've <laughs> you've got quite an interesting story haven't you where you were like seriously in the corporate world for <laughs> quite a long time and it's just more recently that you've you felt to answer the calling in your heart <laughs> yeah yeah that's a great point you know it's I wasn't born into an awakened family where I was initiated from, I mean, I, I have gone through my own personal initiations, but yeah, I was, um, I was an event planner from the time I was 19. I worked for a nonprofit and just gained experience and went to college full time. and was in that, that grind. And then I, I went into the corporate world after that and I did trade shows and all these international events and all this stuff. And, you know, just all the things, corporate marketing, managing teams of people and all of these really intense experiences that um, really elevated me in my leadership um, because I've always been in places of leadership. However, come 2018, I was reaching a point of burnout and I was deeply unhappy with myself. I was the classic kind of codependent empath because I've always been a really sensitive person. Like we were kind of talking about in the beginning um, earlier, just like around being sensitive to nature. And um, yeah, and I was always very spiritual and connected. And I always had my own sort of special relationship with God and spirituality through nature. Honestly, a lot of that had to do with my connection to nature. And there was just this voice coming in over and over quit your job, quit your job, quit your job. And I was like, what am I going to do if I quit my job? Right? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? But I was so unhappy. I was addicted to caffeine and sugar. I was really unhealthy. Um, and I had no time for myself and I had no boundaries and it was just workaholic. And, and then actually what happened was one day I could feel it coming. And it was just like this invitation from God's source. And I was like, okay. And I just walked in my boss's office and I put in my notice and I felt this wave of energy come in. And, and that weekend I camped for the first time in like years. And I spent three days out in nature and I had really deeply shamanic experiences with the plants in a way that I'd never had before. A week later, I surprisingly and unexpectedly met my sacred divine union oh. partner <laughs> and the rest is history you know and and it was this journey of then I was called to Charleston South Carolina for my whole life and I just knew it was like a soul calling to live there and I had planned to move there after I quit my job I said I'm moving to Charleston I'm just doing it yeah. and then I'm I met my partner and we actually went there on like a vacation spontaneously on our third date it all worked out and 
while we're there, he's like, we should move here. And I was like, (laughs) yes, good job. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for knowing that we're doing that. And then, yeah, we, we moved in a few months. And then as soon as I, I got to that grid and I got to Charleston, which is right. We, we lived on an Island in between two rivers and and yeah, and it was very deeply indigenous land there um, and really sacred, sacred ancient trees, angel oak trees that were there. And as soon as I got there, it was like I came online and I started activating my psychic and medium gifts. And then I, it was like, you're a healer and all these things opened up. And that's when Ayahuasca called me to the, to Peru to sit with her and then that is really when my shamanic initiation began as a medicine woman. And then I've been on the path ever since. So it was like, I always knew that there was more to me and more to my life and to my soul's experience than what I was living. But it took really big leaps of faith to be able to actually allow myself to have that experience. So yeah, that's kind of in a nutshell how it's um... evolved. There's two things I was thinking when you were you were talking then. And the first was I was thinking actually how powerful it is that you've had that experience so that you can you have that direct understanding to relate to people who are in that corporate world. You know how that corporate world operates. So it means that you can bring the wisdom that you're bringing through now, you you can also relate it to the people that are still in that place and can speak to them from a place of knowing and understanding, which is incredibly powerful. Um, so I think that's it. Obviously, was meant to be a part of your journey. It sounds like maybe you stayed a little too long, <laughs> and uh, your health was suffering. But I think that's that's also common for a lot of us, isn't it? Because it takes a huge amount of courage to do what you did to say I don't know what's on the other side of this I have no idea what the next step is going to be but I just know that actually I've got to take this step now for me and um so yeah I just want to say like I know that's that's a hard thing for people to do and there's a lot of people that will be sitting in a similar space to you I think at that point where they are feeling like life is a real struggle but the fear is is too much to to step through and and that's okay as well isn't it it's like you know you you've got to do it in your own time and when and as you feel called and and also just be gentle with yourself that it is a hard hard step to to take to trust when you haven't you haven't really done that in your life before Mm, thank you sister yeah Yeah, I feel that intuitively, there are so many people right now who are desiring to connect more deeply to their soul and to being able to live their soul's desire. And I know that for me, even when I was in that experience of working all the time, like nature was still my sanctuary. I would go out and go for walks on my lunch break right? It's like, I, that's what I would do. I would, that's how I would spend my time as much as possible. And it really helped give me the perspective I needed. And the beautiful part is if you feel like something is calling you deeper, all you need to do is declare and claim your path and it will come to you. So it will magnetize to you if you come into your heart and you say like, I am claiming the path of my soul's desires and my highest timeline, everything will begin to come together for that. Now, of course, there could be some fallout from that because (laughs) right when we surrender into our higher expression, all that is not aligned with that will fall away. And so that's when a lot of people go through these processes of, you know, dark night of the soul and things like that, but they're so necessary And it's so worth it because I can't imagine still being in that space. Like I'm more me now than I ever have been. And I'm still making those leaps of faith just in different ways, you know? So it's like being present and trusting if you're getting an intuitive nudge to do something and you feel it in your body and in your heart, it's okay to trust that because there is a path that's coming to you for what you're desiring. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Um, 
really beautiful wisdom for people who might be sitting in that place of um sort of insecurity they they can hear it but <laughs> they're trying to they're trying to turn the volume down on on that nudge that they're getting <laughs> but um yeah and you've you've mentioned a few times uh, about your shamanic journey now um i know some of my listeners probably might not have much idea about shamanism and i don't know if you want to just speak into that a little bit about your experience journeying into that and what it means to you yeah sure so shamanism to me is really about coming home to the earth and to god through the right relationship and connection to source of all that is that created the earth and living in harmony with the earth with the plants with the animals with humanity and really it's about reverence and it's about listening to the intuitive nudges that you receive of where to go, what to do, like walk this way, take this path. It's a really beautiful, magical experience when you can tap into a shamanic lifestyle and cultivating that because like I shared how my pilgrimage was like the most shamanic, amazing, like three days, or it was like four days or something of my life. It's because I was fully present. So living shamanically is also about being fully present and being attuned to the earth because then you're weaving your medicine with the earth and she's also guiding you. So it's like the synchronicity is a synchronistic experience is a very shamanic experience yeah. when, you know, you're getting the download to go here. And then all of a sudden, you know, you see one, one, one on a license plate or yeah. a song comes on that is really connected deeply to you. And you have this visceral like experience in your body of just like wow like I'm in flow like I'm listening like I'm present and there's real magic because shamanism is ancient magic and it is very accessible we just have to come back to presence come back to our hearts and truly have a desire to want to experience it through a lens of reverence and that's really all we need is reverence and appreciation for this planet holding us. And all of these gifts will come in from that. So like giving offerings to the land you live on is a really simple practice you can do to just say, thank you. Thank you, Mother Earth, for holding my home, for holding my family, for keeping us safe, for giving me this provision and giving an offering of even just like a prayer, or it could be a little gift. It could be sacred tobacco. It could be, you know, flowers, like something like that to just build that relationship can change everything because then you're living in harmony and you're treating the earth as a conscious being, which she is. And then she can support you even more deeply and create more miracles in your life. So it's been really humbling and beautiful. And I think a lot of people are coming back to wanting that connection because it's in it's intrinsically in our DNA like we were talking about earlier yeah I think I that was just beautiful I love um I think the the term reverence is just such a a powerful for word isn't it and I don't think we use it nearly enough actually do we it's, it's not really that commonplace in our vocabulary um and I love I love what you said just to people just to as a way to start bringing that more into their life so you know just do these simple little acts and moments of connection to the earth and I guess you know and that comes back to the plants as well in in the same manner the sort of prayers and conversation I guess is opening up this dialogue isn't it and realizing that there are beings and wisdom there that you can you can tap into and speak to yeah yeah that's beautiful sister exactly and developing conscious relationships with even the trees that are on your land and or the river that you go to and you connect to the spirits of nature and the ancestors who walked that land and just asking the tree if you can sit with the tree and and receive the strength you know sitting putting your back up against a tree and connecting 
is so powerful and it can be really activating for you and like the wisdom that you hold. So a lot of the awakening experience is like having those connections to points in nature that are holding certain frequencies in medicine for you. And so it's no accident. Like if you're drawn to certain places in nature, like there's probably gifts waiting for you there. And if you can just attune and, and quiet your mind and open your heart a little bit and, and ask for the gifts and give back and sacred reciprocity, so much can open up and you might get a download in about your next step about what, what's the next move that I need to make? What's the practice that I can do to, to help align me more to what, you know, I'm desiring and nature really holds space for us for that. So there's so many gifts. It's just like intending and yeah. being present and being open. <laughs> Um, I just thought I have to you were mentioning trees and I thought I have to share with you my I've got this beautiful tree um that I've sort of been a custodian of for just over a decade now and he's um an old English oak tree so he's several hundred years old and um and I, I've spent hours and hours sitting with him over the years and actually it's really amazing so his some of the bark started to chip off and it's chipped off in this perfect heart shape and now he's got this <laughs> this huge heart like halfway up his trunk on one side which is like the first thing you see is because that's the way you approach him is always on the side and there's this beautiful like literally you couldn't have carved it better and it, it just literally appeared over time and and when people come by they go then you know they're sort of they're around for a little while and then they go oh my god the tree has a heart <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, he just, you know, and I was like, I kind of feel like he's kind of felt like how much I love him. And that's, you know, his, his way of showing it. So yeah, it's mm. um, they're beautiful beings to be around and, and work with. Wow. I'm really just feeling into that tree's energy and I can feel how deeply your connection is. And that's amazing with the heart and and um his expression coming through <laughs> in that way and yeah I I had some really really deep connections to some angel oak trees when I was living on the island in Charleston that I would sit with that are hundreds of years old and they were kind enough like as I would sit with them there would be like a piece of bark that would fall that they gifted me and I keep it in like a little box on my makeshift altar to just like hold them and connect yeah. with them because I miss them so much like I I saw them every day and connected with them and they held me so deeply and yeah trees are just some of the most beautiful wise and powerful beings and it's yeah. really special yeah and I think um like you said it what's amazing is that actually you will always hold their energy with you even as you move away you can still connect to and and draw on their wisdom yeah it's all about the relationship when you have that authentic solidified relationship it's like you're good yeah. and even sometimes I'll even look at pictures of them or videos like if I'm really being like if I'm really missing them because yeah. there's not there aren't any trees like that around here and uh so sometimes I'll go through and I'll look and it'll just connect to me and I'll feel like that resonance and it feels like I'm just back with the tree. So it's, it's been really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because they become like friends really, don't they actually? Um, when you, when you connect with them, you sort of, you do, you do bond with them like a friend, but I think you just, you mentioned the word resonance there. And I know you've, you've touched on it a little bit earlier as well about the sort of um, the ley line, well, that's what we call them in this country, ley lines and the sort of energetic grid. Um, I know you're about to embark on another, is it pilgrimage? Would that be the right term for it? Another pilgrimage to, <laughs> to some, some exciting places. So I don't know if you want to share a little bit about what you've got coming up as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, really excited. My partner and I were about to leave in just a few days. Actually, we're going to be embarking upon a, a soul pilgrimage to the Badlands in South Dakota here in the States. And South Dakota and the Badlands and the Black Hills, that area holds really deep ancient shamanic magic that are connected to the shamanic grail lines, which are basically like the original shamans and medicine people of the earth 
that have incarnated there. That's the homeland of white buffalo calf woman, who is a Sofiana Grail queen. She's a holder of like the rose lineage, and she's really that divine feminine leader. And so she's she's been calling me there for a long time, and she's been preparing me for the work that we need to do with that land. And so there's been a culmination of experiences happening. And this is a big reason why we moved into the RV is to be able to go and take this, this pilgrimage there. And it feels almost like a soul homecoming. Like there's a lot there for my partner and I to retrieve from the earth because the, the earth grids, when you think of like the grids, like places on the earth, they're, they're storing a lot of shamanic codes and magic and energy and frequencies that our soul is connected to so that's why i always say like if people are like really called to go certain places it's like yeah your soul has pieces there that it needs to remember and to help support you in your path so go go to those places um and so yeah we're we're gonna be going there and i'm i'm so excited because she has invited me to hold these shamanic immersions, initiations, and in-person experiences while we're there. I have no idea how long we're going to be there. It's just until the work is done and we're going to be staying there and traveling the lands, walking the lands and, and really connecting with the earth. And I feel like I'm stepping into a vortex that's calling me home. It just, it feels so deep. And I've I've traveled through those lands as a kid, like we drove through them and like a cross country thing, but we didn't stop. And so I don't really remember, but now it just, it's here and it's just really exciting. I can't wait to connect with the earth and see what is there because there's really, really deep medicine there that I'm excited to be able to bring forward that hasn't been unlocked yet. So yeah, it's a really, really exciting time. No, it sounds it sounds incredible. I think we've always had um oh, well in the UK we've we've obviously got a, quite a few sort of sacred sites and we've got our ley lines and and things. So there's quite a lot of um knowledge around those sort of energetic linkages that connect around the world. And so I'm I'm excited for you to <laughs> to see what's gonna come forward from from your journey over the next sort of well however long <laughs> it, it's it's starting and where it will take you but um yeah I think there is just so much need right now isn't there we are trying to find this new path for our societies that just a way to to honor everything even ourselves I think even going back to like what you were saying about your corporate role and the the fact that you were almost making yourself ill and like in society we say that that's all right you know, <laughs> you know just kind of suck it up and carry on and you know and I think there is just this need to honor everything isn't there this honoring ourselves honoring the callings in ourselves being much more aware and reverent for the world around us and I think the teachings that you're tapping into from the more indigenous cultures and lifestyles where that that was their way of life wasn't it it was that was how they existed on the earth yeah yeah absolutely and nature heals us when we work with the earth we can be healed sometimes when I'm feeling maybe overwhelmed or just carrying a little bit too much I'll literally go and just lay on my back on the earth for even 10 minutes and I'll feel completely rejuvenated because I ask her to please help take what is not mine to carry because I do a lot of processing for the collective. So as a, as a medicine woman, it's just part of my role to like process collective grief and collective rage and anger and all these things that we're going through as a, as a collective. And so sometimes it's just too much and I'll go and I'll ask her and she'll take it from me and she'll transmute it. And then I don't have to carry it anymore. And I'll feel so much better. My physical body will feel better. My mental, my mental health, my emotional, like all of it. So there's so much healing there for us. And I think especially because 
so many people, you know, are in survival right now. I mean, it's a really difficult time for humanity. And so coming home and getting outside more and connecting more, like get outside and get sunlight if you can is so important. And just kind of getting outside because of, you know, just even from screen time and things like that, like nature is so healing and taking time to unplug, like about once a month, I'll unplug for even just like three or four days. I would do it longer if I could, but it's just not really an option, but unplugging from everything is just like a reset and it's so powerful. And sometimes that's all we need for a fresh perspective and to be rejuvenated so we can continue on. So making the time for that self-care with nature is, is so important to our well-being right now. Yeah, I think it's, it is more and more important. And I think, I think there's, um, there's some interesting science being done as well. That's actually like beginning to like show in the scientific manner, what, what we're talking about of how being in nature does, you know, that we, you mentioned the word resonance earlier, the, these sort of, I mean, we're we're quite used to the fact how electricity works and that it is, you know, wavelengths and vibrations and actually that the whole of nature is like that. And when we spend this time in nature, we actually are like it's allowing ourselves in our body to like re align themselves with the resonance that they should be on really rather than they're kind of all messed up and crazy and and they don't know which way it's up and it's allowing them to just get back into that more natural frequency where we feel I guess healthier and and our bodies can cope better um and yeah I think it's there is just when you were talking actually I just come back to that you talked about how nature offers us healing and I know like part of the reason I started my podcast was a lot of people who care deeply about nature feel you know we're bombarded in the media by the fact that I don't know it's almost it's too late you know they they have the scientists have these like sort of global warming like levels that we're at and you know we're, we're getting to the point that we can't reverse what the damage that's been done and people feel overwhelmed and they think what's the point and I was just wondering if you had anything to share about actually the resilience of nature and how I think she has a much greater capacity to heal herself and come back into balance just by giving her the time and space she needs to do that yeah beautiful question sister and beautiful reflections I, to be completely candid, I do not believe in a lot of that fear-based ideology that is pumped through the media. And from my connection to the earth, you know, she's ascending. So she is shedding layers and she is rising in her consciousness. And that's why we're all rising in consciousness and having conversations like this and tuning into nature more through that process. And I believe that through all of us coming together and living in more sacred reciprocity with the earth and being mindful of how we treat her physically, emotionally, connection, you know, connecting to her spiritually, all can be healed through God and through the miracle frequencies of Christ. I have seen it like there's, and that's what a lot of the work that I do is these grid work missions of going and doing this, this healing of the land and clearing, you know, the trauma that's been placed on the land, whether that's through, you know, toxic chemicals or through war or through other things that have happened. It's like, that's why all of the healers and light workers and medicine people are going and doing all of this work in service to the earth to support her. And that's why so many are called to coming back to the land because that's what she's asking us to do. And I believe it is, that's the process that we're in. And it's a choice point, you know, like she's giving us a choice to come home to her and we can choose to ignore that or we can choose to say yes because it feels good and like you said when we're out in nature like that resonance that frequency 
that's our natural state. So she's inviting us to come back to our natural state. And I think it's just removing a lot of the programming and a lot of the societal beliefs of like, go deeper into your screens and go deeper into AI. And it's like, actually like, no, like we're being called back to the earth and to living more in harmony with that. That's what feels organic and natural. And through that, all things are possible. Well, oh, that's, yeah, that's really beautiful. Um, and I think that's what I've seen as well is um, like she responds to just sometimes even the smallest of gestures I guess it's more because of the intention rather than necessarily you know it doesn't have to be a grand you know um undertaking it can be the smallest of gestures and uh, and it what matters is your intention and the energy behind it that is really the key to how you have your relationship with the earth yeah. And even like, I know I'm talking about deeper things like going and doing land healings and stuff like that, but it's like, you can heal the land by, if you see trash at a park, pick it up, take a trash bag. Like my partner and I are going to go do that. We People just litter all the time. It, like infuriates me. I can't, <laughs> I can't stand it. It's just like, I have no tolerance for it. Yeah. And so part of like, we're going to do um, a ceremony before we leave. We've been at this campground for like five months. And before we leave, we're going to do an offering for the land. We did some when we got here and we're going to do a closing ceremony and we're going to go pick up all the trash that we can find and doing small things like that she really appreciates that. And that just shows that you care. And like, even just saying thank you. And if you notice something that needs attention, you know, being a steward, a good steward of the earth. So it doesn't, like you said, have to be these big elaborate things. It can be if you want to, if you're called to that, but it can also be something as simple as every day. You just when I go out in the morning, the first time I see her, I sing to her and I have this song that I sing and it's just like saying good morning to her and thanking her and just like thanking her for being here. And it's like something as simple as that. That's really helped me like connect to Pachamama and yeah. that, that spirit, you know, so it can be any way as authentic, you know, as you want it to be based on your own understanding yeah I love I love that I just have this vision of um of the birds as well I'm like that that's what they do like you know the the dawn chorus is like they wake up and they're like they sing to to Gaia they're like good morning and they, they bring all their best tunes <laughs> it's just, uh, and like, I have this vision of you uh you out there with them <laughs> singing singing your own your own beautiful song to her so, yeah. but yeah I love that I because I think that's that's the thing sometimes um in society we we get overwhelmed don't we and we think because we can't go out there and do that grand gesture or you know we haven't got the time we haven't got the money we've got plenty of excuses and so we can get we can fall in the trap of not doing anything but you know I, I always try to find um ways to inspire my listeners to be to just do the little things so I love what you said like you know just you know picking up a little bit of litter is just you know tidying your little patch whatever that might be um you know your street your road your little garden um just finding a way to honor the earth where you are um and then seeing where that journey takes you that feels so good in my heart yes yeah. And I think if, if everybody did that, what would happen? Yeah. Like if, if that awareness, if that conscious awareness could be activated within every person who like full body chills, like that would just be such a powerful thing to, it's the sacred invitation. And yeah, that's the message. That's the work, right? <laughs> yeah. There's, um, there's a fantastic, um, sort of little, garden movement I suppose um that was started by an amazing Irish lady 
and um it's called our king and it's um acts of random kindness and the idea is basically to rewild a section of whatever part of the earth that you you have stewardship over so if you're in a flat maybe you only have a window box but if you're lucky enough to have a garden then you you offer it back to the earth and to nature and you allow her wild native plants to come back and the native wildlife to thrive and yeah, it just that just seemed to uh, that came into my head, and I thought that just ties in beautifully, like these acts of random kindness, and you know where, you know, and and offering that to the earth, whatever little things that you can do, whether you know, even if it's you write her a little love letter and bury it in the soil, like <laughs> just there's so many things that you can do. I love that so much. Yes, 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 yes to all of that. And there's definitely a plant movement happening, right? Like more, more people are really into plants and they're like, why, why are so many people into plants? And you see like the Amanita mushroom everywhere, right? The red mushroom, right? With the white yeah. caps. And it's yeah. like, they're making their way through the mainstream collective, whether or not people understand what's the depth of what's happening. It's like the plants are calling us home as well, because when you work with the plants, they call you home deeper into yourself and deeper into the earth. And that's like this big, you know, web that we're a part of. So yeah, I love that. That's just amazing that things like that are happening. It's so funny you, you mentioned that mushroom because actually my partner and I were were walking in our local wood yesterday and we have never seen so many <laughs> of that that specific <laughs> mushroom. And they were like just literally like whole little communities of them and like they popped up and there was tiny little ones and then these much bigger ones. And yeah, so it's just it's really interesting. I don't know if if you have any wisdom around that particular mushroom, because I, I feel like it's obviously he wants his voice heard <laughs> right now he's got something to to share with us all yeah so amanita is the like primordial mushroom like she is the mushroom mother i actually dieted her so something that medicine women shamans do is they diet plants to attune to them and to be able to carry their medicine and have access to that. And so I, I dieted her at the beginning of this year and developed a really deep relationship. And it's amazing that she came up for you, um, right before that's really awesome. Um, I love how things like that happen. Um, and this particular mushroom, she, she's very ancient. So like, this is the mushroom that was once used by, you know, shamans, like in Siberia, right? Like thousands of years ago. And also the reindeer used to eat this mushroom because they understood that it like produced them into like a more, um, psychoactive state and allowed different experiences to happen. And so it's, a very ancient shamanic tool. And, um, she has a lot of really deep womb wisdom as well. And it's very subtle. So she's extremely magical though. So sometimes like she'll just pop up out of nowhere. So when you see, and she has different types of species and stuff. So like, usually when she's coming in, it's an invitation to invite more magic into your life and to connect because the mushroom itself is a very playful spirit. It's a very playful energy. And there's so like the mycelium family itself is so deeply connected to the earth and to the trees, right? Cause they're all connected. Yeah. So usually when mushrooms are popping up, it's like this invitation to go a little bit deeper into the unseen realms of the other world and into more of that multi-dimensional space where anything is possible and you're connecting more to that. So yeah, she's making her way through through the collective for yeah. sure. <laughs> she she obviously wanted to be a guest with us today, so I'm glad that um like we allowed the conversation to flow so that her her voice could be shared with with everyone as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you you've touched a few times on um the divine feminine as well, and um I think that's been a great wound, hasn't it, for our collective. Um, the kind of the silencing and I think obviously Gaia is the representative of 
of a mother as well so there is that healing of of that lineage isn't there that that also feeds into helping Gaia to heal yeah absolutely you know to me the divine feminine is Sophia which is the feminine aspect of God it's that that feminine energy and that is Gaia Sophia as well so there is a feminine reclamation happening throughout all of the women as we come into more of divine feminine leadership to really lead the collective and hold space for the collective for healing and for that beautiful ascension process and that goes hand in hand with the earth because as she ascends we ascend and so it's this beautiful connection and um that cosmic womb of the mother as well and that that beautiful connection to life and the experiences that we can have when we rise in our divinity truly as a fractal of god's source and being here and and being able to step into that path through that connection to the earth as well because that's how my shamanic divine feminine path has unfolded has been through the earth because that's i hold earth medicine so it's it's a beautiful way to really come into that path of reclamation and it's available for all women it's something that sophia has assigned me to is to be able to help all women come home to her come home to her sanctuary that's why my my mission is sanctuary of sophia it's the divine shamanic container of bringing women home into themselves and into that connection with with the holy mother sophia yeah no it's beautiful i will um put links to your your website and your uh, social media for people so that they can um come and and learn more about you and and what you're doing um as it is absolutely fascinating um i uh i think the interesting thing is um with it though is it's like as we're healing the divine feminine it's it's not just women though is it it's like there is that aspect in all men as well and actually we're creating the space for them to to reconnect and heal their divine feminine as well that has equally been as shut off and silenced as as women who obviously hold sort of the I guess we're we're being called to to shine the light on it to bring it forward and to heal it for the whole of humanity Mm, beautiful yes absolutely you know a man that has wounded feminine energy is absolutely being called forward to heal that like we all have masculine and feminine energy and so healing that is so important to like being in that truest highest version of ourselves and yeah absolutely holding space for the men as well to be able to do that and them holding space for us to be able to heal our relationship to the masculine and to be in that harmonious balance within our own our own hearts oh well it it sort of feels like we're getting to having had our lovely mushroom come and and share her wisdom with us I feel like we're getting to a stage to kind of wrap up um but I don't know if you have any other words of wisdom on your heart today that you would like to share Mm. I just think that what's coming through is through this conversation is that there's a beautiful sacred invitation to connect more deeply through the heart space with the earth in an authentic way of building that relationship to the earth in a way that feels aligned and exciting and magical because the earth is truly a magical being that can really allow you to experience more of your own divinity and allow you to experience the magic that is here for you through your own life experiences so yeah yeah I think as you were talking there I was thinking um to remember like playfulness and fun as well and I was thinking like there is such a heavy energy around the sort of negativity that is portrayed about the earth and the state of the environment and nature and actually the need to reconnect to a sort of almost more like childlike 
qualities of playfulness and fun and to bring that joy to the earth in our relationship with her as well to for her to hear our laughter and enjoyment of of just being with her yeah exactly and that really connects to the fae to the fae beings that are in the earth realm that are the stewards of the earth as well and connecting to to that playfulness because that is so important finding joy in nature that is such an important part of the experience and that's what she's calling forward as well so it's a beautiful reflection sister oh, well thank you so much for this amazing conversation it has just been i, I don't know the amount of times i've had goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> during this conversation it's just been beautiful to connect um you know from my heart to yours to our listeners to uh th to our trees <laughs> our lovely oak trees your angel oak trees and our lovely mushroom <laughs> as well <laughs> you wanted to to join in so i just want to uh, to thank you and to thank all the beings that have come with us today to share their wisdom and um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sister. Such an honor to share this space with you. And I can just feel Pachamama smiling at this conversation and feeling so grateful. So thank you, sister. Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.